General Rao, DG Artillery, the Army Commanders from Southwestern Command, Central Command, and ARTRAC, who are the senior most officers today in the Indian Artillery, senior officers of the Artillery, distinguished guests, Brigadier Kutub Hai, Chairman CII Defense Committee, ladies and gentlemen, it's indeed a great occasion to be here where the CII, the Directorate General of Artillery, the clause, and various people from defense manufacturing sectors have come together in this third seminar on artillery where various issues would be debated in depth. This has great relevance to modernization of the Indian Army as well as for the betterment of our own artillery as an arm. Right from days of yore, artillery has always been a decisive arm. It has been artillery which has brought in devastating firepower to break the will of enemy, whether it was in the days of the Mughals or it is today. And that is something which we have to count on. Gone are the days when people said that the safest place when artillery fire was taking place was to be on the target. Today it is not so because precision technology, the various guidance systems that are available, the ability to have transparency in the battlefield have all combined to make the person sitting on the target most vulnerable and not what it used to be earlier. And this probably came to us very vividly during the Gulf War and subsequently in our own context during the Kargil episode where the artillery firepower became a battle winning factor in ensuring that the will of the enemy was seriously degraded. And that is what artillery would be all about. The emerging philosophy in the employment of artillery firepower looks at synergizing and orchestration of all the firepower resources to cause degradation and destruction so that the enemy's fighting capability is reduced and it becomes easier to break his cohesion and ultimately break his will to fight. However, the battlefield environment in our subcontinent and our country is changing. We have to not only look at how the conventional employment would take place, but we have to look at the hybrid threats that are coming up. We have to look at how we are going to employ our resources to counter a spectrum which may start from something which is insignificant and carry on to something which is larger. And that is where comes the issue of ensuring that whatever we do meets the requirement of the future. There is great amount of flexibility that is required in the response that we have to calibrate to achieve success in this kind of an environment. However, the need for enhanced equipment capabilities for desired degradation is well appreciated. We have already e inducted equipment like Brahmos missiles, Smirch and Pinaka and achieved a fair amount of long-range destruction capability. Battlefield transparency is another facet which is assisting the artillery in ensuring that they can achieve the desired results. Introduction of UAVs, LOROS, the weapon loading, locating radars and better and more accurate survey systems as well as the ACCCS system has ensured a much better networking and a greater ability of the artillery to bring down fire from all possible resources onto a single target. And therefore, in the seminar that we are going to go through the deliberations in the next two days, I am sure various 
facets of these will be debated to come to terms with what would be good for the Indian artillery. The user, developer and producer forms a tribe. In this case, Indian Army is the user which looks at its operational requirements and comes up with something what it wants. And it clarifies this in terms of a GSQR which is given out to the industry. So far as the development... Director General Artillery, Peter Gurubi Kamal, Director, Center of Land Warfare Studies. Mr. Kurpal Singh, DDG CII, senior officers from the Indian Army and other armed forces, officials from embassies and high commissions, distinguished members from the industry, academia and research establishment, friends from the media. A very good morning to all of you. I take this opportunity to welcome you all to this seminar. We are delighted and honored to have with us General V.K. Singh, Chief of the Army Staff as the Chief Guest. We'd like to thank you, sir, for sparing your valuable time to be with us this morning. We value your participation and look forward to your continued support towards our endeavor to strengthen the defense industrial base of the country. I'm aware this is your first presence at a CII function in New Delhi as Chief of the Army Staff. You may like to recollect that the CII Eastern Region have been working closely with you. We wish to convey our sincere thanks to you for the support you have extended to CII. Your presence here today is indeed very encouraging for all of us. We would wish to work with you very closely in the future as well. We would like to express our sincere gratitude to Lieutenant General K. R. Rao, Director General Artillery and Brigadier Gurmeet Kaval for their continued support and guidance in the organization of this seminar. I would like to congratulate the Director General of Artillery and Center Land Warfare Studies for conceptualizing such an important and relevant seminar, which I believe will provide a platform for the industry in understanding the requirements projected by the users. Ladies and gentlemen, the amendments to DPP 2008 are being viewed upon by the industry as a very positive development. The DPP 2008 Amendments 2009, which have come into effect from 1st November 2009, are very encouraging. And we at the CII welcome these forward-looking reforms. The process of listing RFIs and RFPs at the MOD website is a very welcome step and this will lead to better accessibility and information sharing. The identification of a new category, buy and make Indian, is a very welcome step also. It will ensure that a supply order is placed only on a capable Indian company, but who in turn can negotiate with interesting, interested foreign companies for technical and other production cooperation. This will provide Indian industry an opportunity to explore a combination of alternatives. We expect that such a provision will encourage the formation of joint ventures between Indian and foreign companies. CII also welcomes the government's decision to share a public version of the long-term perspective plan with the industry. This is in the process of being uploaded on the Integrated Defence Staff website. CII is closely working with the IDS to further refine this document. This would enable the industry to plan in advance and gather confidence to invest in various development projects. The increased role of the industry associations in the categorization process is also a welcome step. This has long been a pending demand of the industry. CII is helping headquarter IDS towards identifying ways and means to institutionalize this process. CII has also been working with the various integrated project teams for make projects that are currently being formed. From its original status as a supporting arm, the Indian artillery has now graduated to a full-fledged combat arm that dominates the battlefield with its inherently destructive firepower. In the post-Pokhran 1998, 
and post-Cargill 1999 scenario,